107. I'm going to begin reading with verse number 1, Psalms 107, verse 1. The Bible says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. The Bible commands us to give thanks to the Lord. Why? Because He is good. And God's good to us, friend. He allows you to be here today. God's good. And the Bible says, Be thankful unto Him uh, and bless His name. Verse number 2, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Are you redeemed this morning? Are you saved by the grace of God this morning? Then, uh, then the, the, those that are redeemed should say so. I'm saved. Everybody say, I'm saved. I'm saved. Amen. Let's do it again. I'm saved. I'm saved. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Now, see, that is, that is what we should do. That is the way we should approach God. In thanksgiving and in praise. Verse number 3, And gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them out of their distress, distresses. And He led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. The children of Israel had a... Uh, you know, had a history of, of uh, praising the Lord and worshiping the Lord and then turning from God and rebelling against God. And God would have to bring a calamity into their life. And when that calamity came, uh, whether it be famine or, or uh, bondage, whatever that might be, uh, then they would look back to the Lord and they would turn to Him with thanksgiving and praise and worship for God to deliver them, and God did. Uh, verse 9, For he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Do you remember when your soul was not satisfied? Do you remember when you had a hunger within you for something? You know who filled that longing? You know who filled that hunger? It was Jesus. Amen. It was the Lord. And that's what he's promised to do. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death being bound in affliction and iron because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the, the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and break their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and He saveth them out of their distresses. He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for the wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare His works with rejoicing. And then in Philippians chapter number 4, oh, we read these words, Philippians chapter number 4, verse 5, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds, through Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Blessed, I pray. God, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to rightly divide the word of truth. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to come before thee today. God, for just, just the privilege of gathering in the house of God. And Lord, the privilege of worship and honor and praise to you. God, we realize where we'd be without you, God, that being hell or on our way there. But God, we're so grateful, God, that that you died for us, that you gave your life for us, and God, that we have someone to worship today, and we thank you for it. Bless us today, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. We have in these uh, this Psalms, and we have in Philippians chapter number 4 and verse 6, we have the, the, uh, the command that we uh, give thanks to the Lord. Now, friend, I, I, I wonder sometimes how seriously that we consider what God has done for us. I wonder sometimes if we don't let the, the, the cares of life and the burdens of life and the worries of life 
and the, and the enjoyment of life, I wonder if sometimes that we don't let that get in the way of, of understanding why and who and how we got what we have. Now, friend, we're saved today by the grace of God. We're thankful unto Him. And as, as this Thanksgiving Day approaches you and I, I, th I think we should stop and earnestly, uh, you know, wonder and think of what God has given us. We got the next few days, and I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be busy, busy, busy. But Lord, I pray, and Lord, help me not to forget why I am thankful, and Lord, help me to remember what I've got to be thankful for. I'm telling you, Thanksgiving is not not just for material wealth or material things, friend. The the first settlers that come, they didn't have anything when they come here. They had nothing. Many of them starved to death the first winter. Many of them died of disease the first winter. But when it was all said and done, what God had said He would provide for them, He provided for them. Amen? And God said He'd take care of their needs, and that's exactly what God did. And what did they do? They said, we're going to have a Thanksgiving feast to the Lord. We're going to be, we're going to be thankful for what God has done for us. And that's what Thanksgiving is. Now plans are being made, amen. You ladies will cook on, on Wednesday night. You ladies will cook on, on uh, a Thursday morning and us men will eat, amen. And, uh, and, you know, men help them out around the kitchen a little bit. I know it might be difficult, but amen, stir the gravy or something and you'll be thankful uh, for a wife that will cook for you the way she does, amen. I love it my wife's cooking. There's no better than my wife's cooking. My mama's good. But there's no better than my wife's cooking. My mama makes good biscuits, but my wife makes great biscuits. Amen. And my mama listen to this after a while and probably get upset at me for saying that. But I'll tell you something, Mama, I love you. My, my wife makes cornbread, but you make good cornbread. Amen. And so, friend, we ought to be grateful for what God has done for us in the manner of such things as our, as our eating, such things as our food. My wife and I were out last night and and uh, we stopped by a place to eat that we like uh, a lot. Amen. We like it a lot. And we stopped in there to eat. And, and uh, you know, I've seen people everywhere. And I didn't see nobody stopping to give thanks for their food. We ought to be thankful for the, for the, the material things and the, the things of need that God gives to us. Be thankful. I'm going to give you three things real quickly, and then we'll go. Number one, we should be thankful for life. Every morning when you get up, you think about it. And I was thinking about this when I was thinking about the, uh, the recent death in the family. I was thinking, you know, when he went to sleep, I don't, I don't guess in his mind that he thought, you know, that that was his last night's sleep. And I don't think about that much when I go to bed at night. I go to bed and I should be thankful that God has given me the day that he's given me and a home to, to be in and a place to sleep. And I should be thankful to the Lord for that day. And then when I wake up in the morning, I, the first thing I should do is thank the Lord for letting me open my eyes. Amen. Let Allow me to get out of the bed and allow me to go about my business because one day it's going to be our last day. I don't know when it's going to be. I don't know when my day's going to come. I hope to have at least 50 more years, amen, to preach. And then, and then have ten more years to preach a little more. You say, preacher, you'll be ancient. Amen. If God would give me the health and strength, I'd love to do it. I don't think it'll be that long. But listen, don't know how many days I've got. But God, help me to be thankful for the life that you've given me. A lady one time that I, I knew well, and I heard her say it with her own, her own mouth. She, was, uh, she had cancer, and she had been uh, struggling with that for <coughs> excuse me, for a long time. And I heard her say, and I thought, how in the world can she say it and mean it? But she did. She said, I praise the Lord for my cancer. She said, I thank the Lord for my cancer. I thought, how can you do that except it be God in you? Amen. And as she said, as she said that, she said, I've had a great opportunity to witness because of this. I've had a great opportunity to witness because of, of my affliction. We ought to be thankful for life, friend. We ought to be thankful for every day that God gives us on planet earth because it is our privilege, it is our opportunity that we use those days to magnify Him. Amen? 
to use those days to honor God. And of course we go through life and sometimes the farthest thing from our minds is what God's done for us, but it ought to be the nearest thing to our minds is what Jesus has done for us. I have life because He gave me life. I have life because Jesus died for me that I, ha that I might have life. I have everlasting life because uh, that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary and God the Father gave His Son that I might have not only life on this earth, but everlasting life. We ought to be thankful for life, friend. There's people that die and never think about what's on the other side. Now, there's people that don't even consider that when they're going through their daily routine. If I die today, what's on the other side? Now, friend, if I, if I go on to be with the Lord today, that's exactly what I know is on the other side. It's Jesus, amen? But for people that are lost without God, what's on the other side for them is, is a horrible thing, a horrible thought. But they can have life everlasting like I do if they would turn to Jesus and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Life is a wonderful thing. Abundant life in Jesus is another marvelous thing. Just to live and breathe is a blessing from God. But to enjoy salvation and to enjoy eternal life and to enjoy daily life with Jesus is a wonderful life. Yeah, I'm sure some of you have seen the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. I'll tell you something, there's nothing no more wonderful than the life I have in Jesus. I hear people all the time that, you know, that take their lives. And, and you've heard, you know, you've heard, of, I'm sure everybody's heard of the, of the pastor last week that took his life before he was to go to preach. And somebody asked me about that. I said, you know, I don't understand all that. I know what, I know what preachers go through because I'm one. I know what pastors go through because I'm one. And you can't explain none of that. But I'll tell you something. Thank God for life. Amen. Thank God for life. And I'm glad for him. You know what happens? The old devil tells people their life ain't worth living. They listen to him long enough and they'll end their life because they're listening to the devil. But I listen, I'm glad that I know Jesus. I'm glad that I have life. And I'm glad that I have abundant life in Him. So we ought to be thankful for life every morning, every day, every night. Be thankful for life. And be thankful for the life of our family. Most of us have got family. Some, some folks don't. Then you ought to try to help them. Amen. You ought to try to be a blessing to those folks that don't have family. But I'm thankful for my, the life of my family. I've got three wonderful kids. And how many grandkids now? Five? Five grandkids. Amen. And, and I love them. And I'm glad they're all living and all well. And I praise the Lord. My mom and dad's still alive. Amen. Thank God for life of the family. If you've got family, you ought to, you know, I don't tell them I love them enough. But thank God, amen, for the life of my family. Thank God for the life of my church. Everybody say amen right there. You know why? Because there's nothing dead, amen, about you. Now, we're not the church that shouts all the time. As a matter of fact, we're not the church that shouts any time hardly. But I want to tell you something. The church is not dead, amen. The church has life. And I might not hear it in your voice, but I see it in your face. And sometimes I see it busting out of your eyes and running down your cheek. Thank God I'm glad for the life of the church. Amen. You could be sitting somewhere this morning. You might not, but you could be sitting somewhere this morning where you wasn't, where, where the preacher was kind of lifeless. <laughs> Have you ever been around a preacher that's kind of lifeless? I'm not, amen, I'm alive. I want you to know that. That's why I'm so loud is because I want you to know that I'm alive and I can keep you a little better awake if I'm a little louder. No, it's my style and I wouldn't change it for nothing. Now, I've, heard, I've, I've, I've listened to preachers that stand behind that pulpit and never raise their voice much, but with the power of God, preach to me and cut into my heart with the Word of God and never be like I am. That's their style. But I've also been around preachers that, you know, and, and I, you know, I know how it is to struggle sometimes to stay awake in church. Hey, I know that. And everybody's back there. Ah, ah, ah. 
And you know, it seems like that's the kind that's the longest winded. I'm about a 32 minute preacher. You, I, the way I know that is Brother P- Frank posted online and I always look at how long it was. It's between 29 and 32 minutes most of the time. And I don't time it, but y'all like it. I like it, hey man. But listen to me. There, 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 there should be life in a church. People like, who likes to be around a dead bunch of uh, people? Some people are suited for that. Hey, some people don't like little kids in the church. But let me tell you something. I love little kids in the church. And I've said, if I can't, you know, if I can't preach over to a three-year-old, y'all need to get rid of me anyway. Amen. I like youngins in the church. They add life to the church. And don't ever think this preacher wants to shuffle them off to some children's church. You may be for that. I'm against it. Amen. I believe they belong in the house of God. And I believe they, you say, well, they don't understand nothing you're saying. I use the old country phrase hogwash amen my young, the reason I know that my youngins used to come home but after I'd be preaching think they were annoying everybody else in the church and and the one paying attention to me and you know what they did they'd ask me something about what I've been preaching about more gets in there than you know and the life of a church the life in a church is what will help you and what will keep you and what will help you carry on today it's life in the church so don't ever be afraid that you're going to make the preacher mad if you smile or laugh or say amen or, or, or whatever you do. And don't, don't ever let me th- you know, think that I'll think that, that uh, the children bother me when they're, when they're I love it. Amen. There's life. I, I, downstairs this morning, I come in late uh, because of circumstances beyond my control and it had nothing to do with my wife being late, so I'll clear that up right away. Uh, it was my fault this morning, but, but I, I, I come in late and I walk downstairs. And I hear the chitter-chatter of, of children down in those classrooms. Man, I about had me a spell. Amen. Oh, thank God. I'm glad there's children in the church because that's the life of a church as kids. If you ain't got children, guess what's going to happen to the church? Us old people are going to die one of these days and there ain't going to be nothing. Amen. But we need life in the church, life of, of, of Christians and life of children, and we just need life. So we thank the Lord for the life of the church. And then number two, and I'm hurrying now, we should be thankful for love. Amen. I'm glad for the love of Christ. Amen. I'm thankful for the love of Jesus Christ. He loved me and gave himself for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We ought to be grateful every day. Lord, thank you for loving me. Jesus, thank you for loving me. And now I don't have to go to hell. Thank God for salvation. Amen. We ought, amen, young, and you help me. I'll, that's all right. Once, once in a while, hey, listen, pause. Time out right there just a minute. That reminded me of something. <laughs> once in a while, once in a while, if the adults, you know, they, don't, they won't make much racket. But once in a while, one of these young ones will say, Amen. And once in a while, one of these young ones, one of them Christ. We ought to be thankful that He died for us. We ought to be thankful for the love of our family. And for, the, for this week's over, Amen. You ought to tell every member of your family that you love them. Well, I can't talk that well. Everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody knows how to text. Amen. I know you do. Or you got a Facebook account that you can do it that way. But amen, there's no, there's no excuse any longer for not telling our family that we love them. Amen. I'm glad for the love of my family. I'm glad for a wife that loves me and children that love me and grandkids that love me. And I'm thankful for the, for the love of my family. And number three on that point, I'm thankful for the love of my church. Amen. I'll tell you something. I won't see you Wednesday night. I don't want to tell you something. I love you. Amen. I love everyone that's here. Amen. There's no, you know, there's no standouts or anything. I love everybody that's here. I love you. You're my church family, and I wouldn't have another family. I don't want another family. You're my church family, and it keeps growing. And I love it. I love my church. Amen. And friend, if you love your church family, Amen. You need to keep loving your church family. You love your church family and you want to be around your church family, so just keep, keep showing up for church. Amen. And, you, and that lets everybody know that we love each other around here. Now, I'm not mad at a soul this morning, I don't think, in here. Nope. 
And they couldn't nobody walk in the door this morning that I'd say I'm mad at because I ain't mad at nobody. Amen. And they can't nobody walk into church this morning. And listen, I've had some people in my life that I ought to hate. I'll just tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. I've had some people come along in my life that have done some things to me that I ought to hate them. You know, if, 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 I, was, if I wasn't saved, I probably would. But guess what? There ain't a soul in this world that I hate. I can't be that way and be a Christian. There ain't nobody I hate. I don't even know of anybody right now that I, ter- that I just totally dislike. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of you got somebody running through your mind right now that you say, oh boy, I wish, I wish so-and-so was here to hear this. Amen. <laughs> oh, we're having way too much fun now. Amen. But, but listen, we ought to be grateful for the love of the life and the life of our church. And to, just to get around one another. This is the happiest time of my week. Amen. This is when I find my most joy is on Sunday morning at the house of God. And people say, you don't have no fun. Amen. I'm having bundles today. Thank God for the love and the life of a church. Then number three, we ought to be thankful for our liberty. Amen. Those first settlers came across because they wanted liberty. They wanted freedom from tyranny. They wanted freedom to worship. They wanted liberty uh, you know, to, to worship as they pleased without a state church. They wanted those things, and so they came to this country. And we take it for granted. Many people don't even know what, what, what liberty they have to worship because they never worship God. But we ought to be grateful for our liberty to worship God. We don't take it for granted, friend, when we come to the house of God uh, this morning that it's always going to be like that. If things don't change, if something don't change, if leadership don't change somewhere along the way, I tell you what's little by little, we're the frog in the boiling water, and what's going to happen, it's going to overcome us, and we won't have this opportunity. Preach, that'll never happen in our country. How many other things have you thought would never happen in our country that have? Amen. But now we ought to praise God every day for our liberty to come to the house of God and to worship Him, and for our liberty to worship the days we're not at church. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. It don't say on Sunday. It says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Every day we ought to be thankful to the Lord. What is worship? What is worship? Worship is when we adore the King. Worship is when we, when we adore Him and love God, and we give our offering, our thanksgiving of praise to Him, and when I'm alone with my God, amen, I can say praise ye the Lord from the depths of my soul. And friend, that's worshiping God. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. So we thank God for the opportunity and the, and the liberty to worship. And then we, ought, we should be thankful for the liberty of prayer. Now that's one thing that nobody can ever take from me is, is prayer. There's two things they can't take from you, and that's your birthday and prayer. Amen. Ain't nobody take your birthday away. Amen. It's coming one way or the other. Your birthday's coming. And they can't nobody take away my prayer. They may sew my lips together. Uh, they may cut my tongue out. But in my soul, hallelujah to God, I can still talk to Him. Amen. Because He knows the, de- the, the, uh, t- the, uh, the intentions of my heart. God knows it. He can read my mind. Amen. We can, we, can, we can convey with each other through our spirit. The Holy Spirit of God lives inside of me and He knows my thoughts. He knows the intents of my heart and there can nobody ever take away my prayer. So thank God for the opportunity to pray. And Lord, help me to pray. God, help me to pray. Then last of all, we ought to thank God for our liberty to praise Him. Now, there are some places if, if we well, had... Someone had walked in our church in, in another land and they walked in catching us doing what we doing, we'd all be in jail. And like I say, I've been places in this world where, where people would pack into a room about the maybe twice the size of that room in there and uh, maybe a half as big as of the, is this set of pews, maybe as wide as that set of pews, and about halfway back, and I've seen a hundred or more piled into a building like that 
in the secret, in the darkness, so that they could worship God. Amen. They have no liberty as I have liberty, but I thank God for the privilege that I can pray, that I can talk to God, and that I can worship. And friend, that's what they were doing They were in those little rooms where I was at. They were in there singing and praising and worshiping God. We ought to thank God for our liberty to pray and to praise Him. Because we still got it. Amen. Will it ever be different? I certainly hope not. For my children's sake, amen, I hope it's never different. But if the world has their way, if wickedness has its way, it will shut up our praise out loud. But they can't do nothing about what's in my heart. Amen. Are you thankful today? Are you grateful today for the goodness of God? Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. I pray, God, you bless it. God, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, that uh, Lord, we be grateful and think more on those thoughts this week. And God, we ought to do it every day. But God, you remind us on this Thanksgiving season what we've got to be grateful for. And Father, we pray. And we thank you for what you'll do in Jesus' name. Amen.